Good afternoon. Who's awake here? <laughs> really, I should put my hand up, shouldn't I? <laughs> It'd be terrible if the actual preacher fell asleep. But um, I know this is going to be really hard because I think most of you probably eat more than you usually do. And, um, you know, all the blood's draining from the brain and going to the stomach and uh, nodding off. But I'll just make sure if I see some nodding off, I might just clap my hands and wake you up. But I'm so glad you can come this afternoon. Remember yesterday, uh, we talked about dying to self. How many of you have had an experience in the last uh, 16 hours from, from last night where you've had to die to self? Oh, yeah, I, I was just sitting there before and I was thinking of three different occasions. I don't really want to tell you because <laughs> it's a little bit embarrassing, but um, it's such a struggle. But when you hold on to the hand of Jesus, he helps you. And when you die to self and do something to help someone else, you feel so much better. And it's all by the power of God. We can't do it ourselves. Well, tonight, I want to invite Philly to come up the front. Philly's an a energetic young chap um, that I've got to know over the last three or so months. And um, I'd just like you yep, to come up the front here, Philly. You born in Australia, Philly? Yes, I was. You was. Fair dinkum Aussie, hey. Yep. Can I have some of that hair of yours? Oh, how much do you want? <laughs> how much do I want? Oh, watch out when you sleep tonight. <laughs> I might come and get some. Um, have you always grown up knowing about Jesus? Uh, not until I was about 12 years of age. 12 years of age. Roughly okay. What, what happened when you were 12 years of age? Um, my mum started going to church. Oh, okay. And good old mum with a tribe of children, not sure how many, <laughs> took them along and that's when you first got to know about yeah. Jesus. Okay. Did you instantly fall in love with Jesus? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay. I didn't know God. You didn't really know God much. Oh, wow. I want you to, I know that you've got a bit of a story to share regarding your, your life. Um, not that it's been a really long life, but in, in that short life, some interesting experiences have happened. So if you just want to share with us. Well, when I was, while well, I've been growing up, I never really knew the Lord. I left school in year 11. I started working. I started building walls, doing labouring, and it was hard work. The people that I worked with were rough people. Um, their life consists of drinking and smoking and lots of swear words. So from as soon as I got to work, it was always go, rushing. They were very impatient people, always swearing. Not exactly the type of people Christians should be hanging around if you're building up your life. So in working with people who swear and they drink, did that influence you to start a bit of drinking and swearing yourself? Um, yes, it did. It was really hard because every afternoon yeah. um, the boss would always have his beers and with the boss drinking, I'm his worker. So he's always offering me beers and mm. a couple of occasions I fell, but praise the Lord he got me out of there. Oh, praise the Lord. So you were actually quite young and as I understand you were earning pretty good money even though the, the work was really rough. Yeah. But right at this very moment, Philly, he's in a Bible college, in our, in our college, where how much do you get paid working as a Bible worker? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's, it's a great thing. Anyone wants to join and become a Bible worker, come along. You get paid absolutely nothing. Uh, is your food guaranteed? Not all the no, time. No, not all the time. It's a college that runs by faith. But the good thing is that it's run by God, and God Amen. looks after his people, doesn't he? Yes, because look, Philly is still alive and look, he's still got muscles, he's not emaciated, he does eat. But to go from a well-paid job at, at your young age, getting earn, earning quite a bit of money, to going to a place where you don't earn anything, how did that happen? Well, um, I was just about to hit $35 an hour. Wow. And I was at 18 years of age, lots of money. I only had two loves in my life, that was my car and my job. I live for my car and I live for my job. So I really had nothing else to live for. I drifted away from the Lord and, and yeah, um, what was I going to say? Um, well, how, how did your direction go towards the Lord? Because okay. good job, 
good car, nothing else in life that you need, and yet you're here. How did that happen? Well, my family got invited to come to Penrith Church. This That's, church here? Yes, this very church. Okay. And I attended the Beyond Imagination series last year, which was a great blessing for me. It was actually in March this year, believe it or not. I know, it feels like oh, last year. year. It was this year, wasn't it? Yeah, it was this it year, so in March. <laughs> Only six months ago. Wow. Okay, I stand corrected. <laughs> and they changed my life, this series. Um, wow. I learned who God was. I grew a love for the Lord. And I learned that without the Lord, I am nothing. Wow. And because of that, I am where I am today. Praise the Lord. And the final question I always seem to ask people, would you swap your life right now for what you were doing back then? Never. 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 Did you hear that? Never. Here again is an example of what Jesus can do to a person to change their life. And now you're helping others and sharing with others how much God loves them. Yep. Thanks a lot, Philly. No I appreciate that. And, and to me, <laughs> in a way, these stories of the, the word, the living word in the life, means so much more than just um, someone preaching concepts and ideas of the Bible because that is where we see the evidence of where it changes a person's life. Before we begin this afternoon, I just ask you to bow your heads. Dear loving Heavenly Father, I'm really excited about this afternoon's topic. I just pray that you'll use me, that you'll fill me with your spirit, that you'll move my tongue to say words that will penetrate the heart, that each one of us may understand what beautiful news you have for them. I pray this now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Once upon a time, there was a little caterpillar called Chris. Chris the caterpillar. And he loved eating. Who loves eating around here? Yes, all the ones who are about to fall asleep. I know you love eating. And he just loved munching on anything that was green. Munch, 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 munch. See something green? I've got to eat it. And he started getting fatter and fatter and loving life until this beetle, Bob the beetle, who was a little nasty black beetle who didn't like caterpillars, came buzzing around and saw Chris the caterpillar. He goes, oh, what an ugly, fat caterpillar you are. And sort of Chris looked up, who's that? And Bob the beetle buzzed around and says, you're never going to be anything like me. I fly around, I can go around the world, and you, you're just crawling along, and all you eat is green stuff. And look at you, you're fat, you're ugly. You know, Chris, Chris the caterpillar started thinking about that and thinking, yeah, I can't fly and I do look fat. But he loved his food <laughs> and he kept eating and munching, but he wasn't so happy about eating and munching anymore because it made him bigger and bigger. One day as he was eating and munching, you know, when you eat, you're so focused that you don't observe anything around you. He looked up and wow, this beautiful, glorious colour was just in front of him and he made out this wonderful monarch butterfly and he just was like... <gasps> You know, the, the leaves fell out of his mouth. <gasps> wow, that beautiful colour, the, the wings, and oh, and it flies. Oh, I wish I was like a butterfly. And he watches that monarch butterfly just started floating in the breeze, and he was there, he'd forgotten all about eating. He was now crawling as fast as his hundred little legs could go. How many legs a caterpillar has? I haven't counted yet. But he was running, trying to follow that beautiful butterfly. And, you know, every day he started dreaming about this beautiful butterfly I wish I could be. But every once so often, Bob, the bug, the beetle, come buzzing around and go, Ah, oh, look at you, Chris, you're an ugly, ugly caterpillar. You're going to crawl around for the rest of your life. Oh, you poor, poor insect. Well, one day, Chris, the caterpillar, had really eaten so much. Have you ever been to a stage where you've just eaten so much you think you're going to explode? You've just eaten so much, it was like, Oh, I think I've got to sleep. Oh, I shouldn't yawn in here because you'll start yawning. <laughs> and he rolled on his back and 